All right, Yale nerds, thank you for tuning in again, episode 88. And this one is by request of one of the listeners who said, is there a place for tips, treasury, inflation, protected securities in your portfolio? So here is my response. A couple of quick things. Speaking of listeners, we are up to 207 and we're about a year old. Thank you for tuning in. If you are relatively new, please check out the playlist. It organizes things in sequential order. And last but not the least, this is not investment advice, it is education. I learn, I share my learnings, I am not pitching any product. Take everything I say with a bucket of salt, forget about a grain of salt. Hey, uh, how are you doing with the markets, the uh, equity side of the world? There are a little bit of rumblings, uh, you know, the things are getting a little shakier. We kind of expected that, if you may remember. And I am tilted heavily towards fixed income, anticipating this within reasonable certainty. Uh, Let's get to today's agenda. Tips. What are tips? Can tips become tipsy? And we'll talk about that. And is there a guaranteed win strategy for tips? And what do you need to do to position yourself to win? And my three-month strategy for the economy and my portfolio. And I'll share that with you as well. All right. Well, let's talk about the traditional treasury first. So if you buy a treasury and it's an 18 month security and you expect to make 5% on an annualized basis, what will you get every six months? If you answered 5% coupon, if you answered $50 every six months, eh, you will be wrong. Remember it is annualized. So you're going to get $25 every six months. And at the end of the 18 month period, you get your thousand dollars back. That is the very simple security. We all understand that your principal comes back in full. You get the coupon payment along the way. You know exactly what you're going to get. Very, very simple. Well, some things are happening in the economy. I love eggs. I have eggs for breakfast every day. A dozen eggs used to cost $3.99 and the cost of eggs is skyrocketing. And I'm like, wait a second. When I bought this treasury security, you know, the, the price of eggs was four bucks almost, and now it's seven. So my thousand that I got back after 18 months doesn't have the same purchasing power. That is the argument for the treasury inflation protected securities. It's not based on a dozen eggs. It's based on a basket of goods. You and I don't get to decide our basket of goods. The Fed gets to decide what's in that basket. So how do you protect yourself against inflation? Let's talk through that. Assume you went back and bought a tips. This time you paid $1,000 and the coupon you expect is 3% annualized. One more time, what do you think you will get every six months? If it was a traditional security, you would get 15, 15, 15 for a total of $30 a year or 3%. But this time you bought a tips and I'm using eggs as a proxy for the CPI and the CPI varies definitely not by 33% and 40%. That would be Argentina. That would be other countries where inflation is raging. So for us, it'll be more like a percent, 2%, 3%, that sort of thing. So in our world, when we buy the superhero product, look at this, that is the tips woman. And she is very powerful. She's a superhero. She says, I got you. I know you're suffering. The price of things is increasing. Instead of $15, I am going to release my CPI and based on the CPI, perhaps you're gonna get 1560 after the first coupon payment. Look at this, the prices are skyrocketing. I'm gonna give you 1620 and even for the third coupon, I'm gonna give you 1650 and you are laughing your way to the bank because when it matures, you actually get 1032. So even your par value you get a little extra there and you are like, thank you for taking care of me. Tips is the best thing since sliced bread. I should move all of my portfolio to tips because when there is an inflation, it is the best thing I could have. I get a higher coupon payment and a higher power value. How amazing. Let's sell everything we have and go to tips. Oh, oh, wait, wait, one, one quick thing. So let's talk about what will happen to tips in a non-inflationary economy. And I would argue right now we are in the opposite. We are in a high interest rate environment, but inflation is arguably falling. 
And you can make the argument to yourself, you do whatever you want to do, but if you follow the Fed's numbers, if you follow Fed's CPI, inflation has been steadily falling, inching towards the 2% number. So if you own the tips that you bought a year ago, and you thought you were getting a 3% coupon, meaning $15 every six months, and the price of eggs is falling over the next 18 months, guess what? You are not going to get 15 bucks, you're gonna get the number lower and lower and lower, but the Fed still's got your back, even though, you know, in 18 months, your purchasing power of your thousand bucks is higher than the purchasing power of your thousand today. The Fed says, I'm not going to stiff you in your par value. I'll give you your par value. You know, the superhero looks a little bit not so super, I got to admit. Uh, so the reality is your principal is still at par, but you really can't count on that interest payment, the coupon payment because it goes down in the non-inflationary environment. Uh, there's also one, one quick thing I got to add to this. Uh, there is another factor, you know, superhero right there. There is another factor. The coupon that you get, if you went to the market today, when a five-year treasury pays 4.63%, the five-year tips only pays 2.27%. Hey, you do you. If you're betting that there is going to be this giant inflation over the next five years and your coupon payment will make up for it, and oh, by the way, your par value is going to be higher, the rest of the fools can buy the five-year treasury at a fixed rate of 4.63%. Keep going. Uh, I, I do need to remind you, you know, tips may or may not be the superhero at the bottom and not the superhero at the top because there is one more caveat. What's that caveat? Superhero, tell me. The choices for duration of a tips are only five, 10, or 30 years. There is no three month, there is no six month, there is no nine month, there is no one year, there is no two year. This is all you got, five, 10, or 30. And if your superhero still doesn't look like the bottom right, one more thing. Hey, yeah, uh, let me talk to the superhero again. There is something called trading volume. Why is that important? If there are only couple of people that are willing to sell you something, meaning you're looking to buy tips and you can only buy it from a small number of people, then you have lower supply and higher demand, which means you may end up paying a higher price. What about treasuries? There are 60 million treasuries bought and sold each day, 60 million, and they are sold by 44,000 odd people that come in and say, I'd like to sell, I'd like to buy, I'd like to sell, I'd like to buy. And this is from FINRA, and that is on the T-bills. Why don't you take a deep breath and say, what, or make a guess of what you think the number would be for tips? In drum roll, the answer is 1 30th of the volume in less than five years. And as you go higher in the duration, 1 100th of the volume. Good luck with that. The number of brokers is also a tiny, tiny fraction, less than 2%. What that means is if you are out there to buy, you may be paying a premium because supply is not very high. So that's another risk. And uh, so the superhero is looking a little bit dicey. Wait, one more caveat. What's the other caveat, superhero? There is something called phantom income. What is that? Well, remember the cash flow we laid out for tips where in theory, the $1,000 is really a bigger number here and a bigger number here and it's 1,032. Well, you gotta pay taxes on the difference between the par value and the imputed value along the way. Even though this $6 wasn't income that came to you, you earned 3% of a bigger number and so you need to pay the Fed taxes on that $6. And so good luck with that. Uh, did, I, did I just tell you all the caveats? Let me summarize in case you forgot, because we are now going to go into how you can guarantee yourself a win with tips, because hey, you may be far more capable of doing this than me. So how do you guarantee a win with tips? Drum roll, here is all you need to do. Very easy. Number one, you need to predict when the lowest of the low is for CPI. And if you guess May 2020 in April 2020, you are a genius. Congratulations. 
And then you buy the shortest duration tips, which would be five years, which means your security matures in May of 2025. And you would buy it in an auction to minimize the spread. And as the phantom income comes along, you gotta have losses to offset it. Otherwise you're gonna keep paying taxes. And oh, by the way, you are then sitting there praying for inflation because that is what increases your coupon value and also increases what you get paid five years later. And you kind of are rooting for at the end of that five year period, you will get paid a nice premium. Maybe you get a thousand fifty bucks instead of a thousand and higher coupon periods. You genius you. But then once you get the thousand fifty, you don't want that inflation anymore. You want it to go down because you want to keep the thousand fifty. So you start praying for deflation. And, and oh, by the way, you, you can't count on that coupon in between because even if you make out with the 1050 at the end of five years, your coupons may not be what you were told they would be because they may be deflation in the interim period. And, and so it's kind of a little bit of a guessing game. In my lens, tips went from being a superhero to something like this to something like this. I don't like the uncertainty in tips. My prediction skills are terrible, remember? I expected a debt ceiling crisis and I went to cash for a third of my portfolio. I was wrong. I expected the government to shut down on October 1st and I expected a mess and I again went to cash. I was wrong again. Well, I would argue I was only wrong on timing. Good luck with this stuff getting fixed in another 45 days. So the only thing I would tell you with great humility is you know i didn't go stuff my cash under a pillow i just bought really short-term treasuries and so i can get right back into the game i didn't really lose any money there is no risk for me in being wrong in the sense that all i did was change my duration and you do you all i can tell you is tips is a little too doozy for me let me share with you what i am doing though here is my three-month strategy with the world worried about shutdowns and interest rates and inflation, I am building a barbell. I'm not buying five-year and 10-year treasuries. That's too much for me. I am buying two-year treasuries because my humble guess is that interest rates are kind of at the peak. They may even start decreasing next year. So I just want to buy on the two-year spectrum and start loading up. I also am sitting out the equity market until a nice big crash. I'm sorry for wishing for the terrible thing. It's not that I'm wishing for a crash. It's just that I don't want to pretend as though it is only going to go one way, which is up. There is one stock that I am bullish on. Warning, warning, warning. I am discussing an equity I already own. I have harped about this one before. Do your own due diligence. Do not believe me. The one I want to talk to you about is CalMain Foods. Look at this. CalMain Foods is crashing and burning. Holy moly. It was at a high of 63, something like that. It is at 42, still crashing today. Unbelievable crash, and I love it, and here is why. CalMain Foods stock trajectory follows the price of a dozen eggs. And as you may all have experienced during COVID, the price of a dozen eggs doubled, tripled. And since that time, it has had a meteoric fall in part because the you know, supply chain was blamed and then the avian flu was blamed. And anybody was a successful egg farmer right around this time because you can raise chicken and sell the eggs at three times the price, even if you're a terrible chicken farmer. But if you are a good chicken farmer, you gotta be able to survive at 2015 prices. That's the interesting idea. Let me tell you about CalMain Foods. If you bought all the stock at the existing share price, you would end up spending $2 billion. If you then took all the cash in their bank and paid off all their debt, you would only be out 1.68 billion. In other words, they have 500 million chilling in their bank account and they don't have any debt. That is what this is saying. Let's dive deeper. Um, the, this is Schwab. I did not pick these competitives. Schwab picked their competitives. This is Treehouse Foods, THS. And TR is Tootsie Roll Company, whether you think a candy bar and a confection, like a food maker, whether these are the right comparisons or not, you do your math. Uh, but there is really no other publicly held egg form. That's the reason why this is about as close as it gets. 
but a very quick look see here their return on assets and return on equity are 10 times five times higher sales per employee is three times higher profit margin twice as high please be aware that they i have a conflict of interest you have to do your due diligence also note their earnings per share is 10 times higher their pe ratio however is 10 times lower how about that the company makes 10 times more earnings for every dollar in the share price but it trades at 10 times less i love that value proposition there and in terms of price to cash flow for every dollar of cash flow you pay twenty dollars for competitors you pay two dollars for this company love that again as a value investor their sales is growing three times higher than competition except their growth forecast is low why is their earnings per share forecast low it is because the price of eggs is crashing so let's look at their profit margins you know tootsie roll has a pretty healthy gross profit margin but when it comes to operating profit margin calmain crushes anybody in their path look at their cash flows this is the cash that is available to give back to investors and they have double the cash available their cash flow per share is insanely higher compared to competition i love everything i see about this their current ratio is multiples of what anybody else has their long-term debt to equity ratio is zero so here is the ultimate question you have to ask if egg prices continue to drop and somebody is an egg farmer they were perfectly fine when eggs sold for seven dollars a dozen it didn't matter how efficient they were what happens when the egg prices are only three dollars a dozen the reality is any debt ridden egg farmer is going to crash calmain foods with all kinds of extra cash in the bank is going around buying other egg farms here is one day announced on september 28th they said hey we have an agreement we bought it all cash just take some of that cash go buy increase your market presence that is what you are likely to see in a bull market everybody is a genius selling seven dollars you know dozen eggs for seven dollars in the recession in a deflationary market you have to be very efficient you cannot have debt otherwise people like calmain foods who have cash in the bank will come eat you up and that is what is happening in the market i will end with this quote if you don't read the newspapers that's mark twain i will say if you don't watch youtube you are uninformed if you watch youtube you are misinformed so do your own due diligence don't believe me thank you for watching yield nerd